The deputy minister isn't the only one who's been commenting on this matter. The head of Human Security Department of the National Security Council Secretariat, Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensah, retired, is also pushing the government to suspend salaries of striking polytechnic teachers in Ghana. The teachers have been on strike since May 15, an action that has led to the closure of all 10 polytechnics in the country. The former national security advisor said, it is unfair for anyone on strike to receive his pay at the end of the month when they have never provided any service. He's asking, why should uh, anyone on strike be paid? According to him, it does not make any sense. Brigadier General Mensah believes union leaders have often declared strikes in Ghana without proper consultation with their members, and that stems from the high level of indiscipline in the country. So does the ex-military leader have a point? Uh, you recall also that there had been a lot of conversation around this and we, we want to get into the morality of this. I'm joined over the telephone by uh, Labour expert Openyi Obing Fusu. Hello Openyi. Yes madam. Striking polytechnic teachers or lectures. Mm -hmm. Should they be paid or not? You see, there are two types of strikes in, in the law. One is a lawful strike, and the other one is an unlawful strike. If you are on an unlawful strike, that is illegal strike, then you should not be paid. The law says that in section 168, subsection 4. And again, if the employer wants, or uh, uh, excuse me, the employer may also terminate the appointment. That is unlawful strike. But as I've been telling people, since the beginning of the Labor Department in 1938, up to this time, almost all the strikes in the country have been unlawful. So if an employer said he will not pay those people who are on the unlawful strike, the employer is right because it conforms but to the Labor Department. Yes. When we take the uh, case of Potag, the court has declared their strike that's, legal. That's, 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 that's what I'm coming to. Okay. Now. Right, go ahead. You see, now, in the case of Potag, the, the court, this is the first time we have had a lawful strike because the, the, the strike has been uh, said to be a lawful strike by the court of law. And nobody has challenged that one. Mm. So if you are on a lawful strike or a legal strike, then you should be paid. Because, you see, in Section 169 of the Labor Act, it says that legal effect of lawful strike or lockout. And I quote, during any lawful strike or lockout, the employment relationship between employer and the workers shall not be affected by the strike or lockout. And any termination of the contract of employment as a result of the lawful strike or lockout is void. You see, it means that here, the worker has gone on a strike, which is lawful. It means that he has complied with all the lawful uh, uh, things that he should do. And fortunately for them, this strike has been declared illegal. And I say that in my experience from 1957 to this time, mm. when I started working with the Labor Department to this time, uh, this is the first time a strike in Ghana or from Gogos to Ghana has been declared lawful. And if the per those who are on lawful strike are there, then they should be paid according to the law. Uh, absolutely. But Obeni, you have also worked at the National Labor Commission before. Let's look at how this matter is being handled. W what would be your assessment? A are you happy with it? I'm not very happy at all. I'm not happy at all. Because, you see, when there's a dispute, the disputants report to the Labor Commission and they go through the motions in accordance with the law. And this, I'm sure, would have gone through all those processes. And then they went to court. And the court said, no, what they have done is a lawful strike. So go back and go for arbitration. And when the court says they should go for arbitration, it means that the Labor Commission should now set up the arbitration panel. Mm. And I presume it is, this one should be 
we have two types of arbitration, voluntary arbitration and compulsory arbitration. But because these people have gone on strike, the arbitration should be called, should be compulsory arbitration. If they are not going on strike, because they are not essential But, to but you see, Obeni, the, the, the yeah. problem is the fact that Potag has informed us that, I, I, indeed, they were called in for a process to begin, but they got there only to be turned away indefinitely. Yeah, yeah, I'm pleading with... When, when, when the commission behaves like that, what, what do you make of the situation as it, Labour? It, it's it's uh, rather unfortunate. Madam, it's rather unfortunate, but I think that the commission and the parties concerned should agree that there is always a end to every type of litigation. Mm. And so if the court has asked them to go for arbitration, they should make it, they should make all necessary efforts to do the arbitration and then come to end because in arbitration like any other settlement, you don't want, you don't get what you want, but you get a compromise. Mm. So the commission and the POTAC members and the ministry and all those uh, involved to try to settle this. I see. Openly, I'm going to have you. I'm going to have you hold the line. Just just hold your breath for me a little. James Dugar has joined our conversation. He's president of the Polytechnic Teachers Association of Ghana. James, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Martin. How are you? I'm I'm very well, and and I hope you're well too. Now the the, the yeah, point is. You. Uh, there was a hearing yesterday, and uh, the National Labour Commission failed to show up. Yes, that is it. We were very surprised because they have drafted to court again, while as they did the other time to prolong this our fight. And uh, yesterday we were there, and uh, they they chicken out, so we don't know why. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. I say they have drafted to court, and when we went there. They, they, they chicken out and uh, without any explanation. So the case has been adjourned to the 19th of this month. But what does it mean for the entire process of trying to get your demands met? For me, it looks like none of the parties is willing to compromise at any po any point. Considering uh, from, from, from my interaction with Upeni, he said, arbitration doesn't mean you get what you want. Arbitration means that you, you, you come to a pro compromise, you compromise on, on your demands. But I don't see that happening at all. Well, the issue is that we are also very surprised. And uh, if, uh, but for the law, if not, uh, this money should not even come to arbitration because it is our condition of service and it is our right. So if somebody is trying to sample on them, uh, there are other legal needs, but uh, we are also being patient to see how the processes will go. And the way they are, the institutions are behaving, we cannot get a uh, week in between it. Because we met Parliament, and the Parliamentary Select Committee came out the whole day. We discussed everything, and we had a proposal, sent them before the minister, and uh, every proposal was thrown out. And he wanted to, you know, show uh, a one-man show, um, uh, what do you call it? Memorandum of Understanding, and we said with that one, we cannot also go by it because Memorandum of Understanding means all parties should agree. I mean, they should come even, they should break even and then agree. But you cannot, uh, you know, single-handedly hand over a memorandum or a proposal to a group to adhere to. Mm. Openly, you, you, you heard the president of POTAG. I heard, him, I heard him. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, in industrial issues, we need to have what we call win-win process. You see, and, and, and I'm pleading with both the Labour Commission and the parties involved to, to, to try to help us to reach an agreement. And, and uh, as he's saying that we have asked them to meet on the 19th, I would plead that the Labour Commission this time round should go to the table to meet with them mm. and whoever is uh, party to the problem but, but... to resolve them. Uh, opinion, does, does, does this, does this like signify the Labour Commission's inability uh, and, and perhaps it signifies that the Labour Commission is uh, not capable, it has not got the capability to deal with this matter because it's gone on for too long? Yes, uh, I, I, I wouldn't like to say something because I, I was there with them. But I, well, I we there, want our I students... 
Uh, of, of any, uh, I'd rather we are frank about this because then uh, polytechnics have closed down across the region. It, uh, the whole country, we don't have any of our schools running. School is yeah, reopening. Yeah, yeah. If the National Labor Commission is incapable of handling this, we should say it. So if uh, private arbitrators will be brought into the matter, we look at that because we can't have people's education go to waste. Are they the law doesn't say, incapable of doing this? Hello. I'm listening to you. You see, we, we have to go in accordance with the law of the country. The law of the country says that uh, if you have a problem and you are in the informal, you are not, you are not in the essential service, the arbitration should be voluntary arbitration. And you don't, but once you go on site, then the arbitration should be compulsory arbitration. And the law says only the, uh, uh, Labor, the Labor Commission uh, people should be the parties, should be the Panel. That is a tripartite panel made up of one representative from employer side, government side, and worker side to be on the panel to arbitrate. And if you ask that a private arbitrator should come in, that means that you are going against the law, except to me, except that the court say that the, uh, the, 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 this adjudication should be done by private arbitrators. Mm. Otherwise, the Labor Commission cannot do that. The, the, uh, the, the, the Labor Commission could only bring private arbitrators when the two had not gone on site. But once they are on site, then the law says that it should be, the arbitration should be done by the panel from the Labor Commission. Mm. I, I, I see. Uh, and, and, and so, James, but at some point in, in your course of uh, negotiations with government, government had indicated that you signed a memorandum of understanding, which you refused. Yeah, the issue on the ground is that, uh, you know, uh, before we went to meet the minister, uh, the parliamentary select committee, you know, the student petition that they should intervene, and they, they have to meet the stakeholders before. That is the Minister of Education, Finance, Pay Wages, and then the, what do you call it, the uh, National Commission on Special Education. Committee. Uh, yeah, they met them before they met us. So when they met us, we came out with some five uh, proposals to government. And the following day, the uh, minister called, and when, when he called, in fact, the uh, chairman was saying they won't go because when they, whenever they go there, he gets, uh, you know, uh, ridiculed ads and all that. But I pleaded with them that he's a minister, and in any case, he has a problem, he has to solve it for us. So let's go. And then we exercised patience and went the following day. He threw all that the parliamentary select committee uh, arrived at overboard and wanted to bring a one man show memorandum of understanding. And we told him, and what was uh, the bone of contention is that his number one proposal or memorandum of understanding is that we will reopen negotiation on the National Research Fund. And we argue that that National Research Fund, we support it. But let us decouple that one from what we are doing now because it is going to affect our conditions of service. So that we review our conditions of service, which was not reduced since 2006. So that when we arrive at that, then we will bring the National Research Fund issue on board. And mm. it was also very uh, adamant to our request and say we have to sign that one. Then if we cannot do it, then you see, he was better. J J James, then, I, 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 I understand where you're coming from. And I'm happy you have said that your conditions as, uh, of service, uh, it, they, they come as a right to you. But here's what I don't understand. Why you should hold the students to ransom? My thing is, it is a job. It's a career. If you feel the condition of service is not good enough for you, why would you quit? The law is not saying you should quit. The law is saying you have to fight for your rights. So if you, it is your so right, my point is, anytime you have to quit for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is your right. But your employer is unwilling. I'm sure there are some of your members who would be willing to, to teach if you decide to come to a compromise. But you're not coming to a compromise. Students have been, have been held to ransom. And... and Polytechnic education in the country at the moment is at, is at a standstill. Why won't you quit? And then you take salary to at the end of the month. Why won't you just quit? And let's see how we can go forward if, if your employer is unwilling to compromise. Yeah, the employer cannot take a unilateral decision not to compromise. There is no law that we should, uh, uh, condition of service which was endorsed and then authenticated by about 21 signatures. And somebody will just get that one day at his will or pleasure to take it off and say, well, if you want quit. We don't do that. We don't run 
it's it, it, it like that. But is it all right for the employee to, to hold the whole educational system to ransom? No, we are not holding to ransom. The, the, the trigger of the matter is there. We are the, the, the immediate cause, but the remote cause is there. So let's look at the remote cause so that uh, it will be settled. If not, when we allow things to be like that, anybody will just get out one day and take his one man decision and want to bring the nation to a halt. I agree, but both of you have taken an entrenched position. None of you is willing to back down. None of you is willing to come to a compromise. And how does it make you feel as, as a no, teacher? The truth is that uh, I am equally very you know, enthusiastic to teach. I've been teaching for the past 20 years. But the, 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 the crux of the matter is that my conditions of service, that's why I agreed and we all agreed and I came, accepted the, 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 the what do you call it, the offer. Mm. So you cannot just get up and then do it. And okay, James, James just, any, just hold the line for me. We are not taking any stringent position. Mm. Our position is that let's agree and give ourselves, ourselves timelines. We know maybe if you are feeling... feeling uh, right, J James, just just hold the line for me. Open you, are you there? Yes, I'm there. You see, is just, is there is there open you, Just we have very little time. Just just respond to this question for me. Is there a law against uh, restructuring? Is there a law against uh, changing your mind about conditions of service? No. You see, let me tell you this. Uh, in every in, in every organization. The terms of employment are governed by labor laws, conditions of service, or political agreements. You see, they are governed by labor laws, conditions of service, or terms of employment. And anything that you want to change in it, you see, all those things that are there are called rights. Mm. Rights. So it means that if there is any dispute, it's a dispute of rights. And if you want to change it, let the terms of employment or conditions of service elapse. And then when you are renewing it, then you can change those things that you want to be changed. That becomes interest uh, right, interest uh, dispute. But what is happening now, I think, may be a dispute of rights, mm. which is already in their terms of employment, and they are demanding it. So I feel that there they should compromise and then let them have uh, what is in the condition of service. What is and in the condition of service? be renewed, mm. then they can do it and get what they want to get. Mm. Right. Openi, we'll leave our conversation here for now. Thank you very much. Openi Obing Fosu is a labor expert. James Dugra is uh, still over the telephone. James, so, so what's the next uh, line of action? Well, the next line of action is we will meet Congress is meeting maybe getting to the close of this week. And then we look at it because we were very surprised that the National Labor Commission didn't turn up. Yesterday, if they have turned, maybe we would have seen the, the way forward. And our plea is that uh, the, the, the powers that we should consider the proposals we brought from the August House, so that when we come to a compromise, we are not saying we should follow or there we have our fight. If we agree on three, then we give ourselves timelines so that we come. You know, we are not interested in the fight. Mm. But the issue is that they are just trying to trample on our, our, our condition of service, which are our rights. And they, it is not very fair for anybody to do that, because uh, we are all the near, and we all want Ghana to progress. So we are pleading that the August House, that is the highest uh, you know, law-making body in the country, we are taking decisions, and one person wants to hijack it and impose his decision on us. That is what we find very unfortunate. Many thanks, James, for your time as well. James Dugra is president of the Polytechnic Teachers Association of Ghana. Share your thoughts with me on facebook.com forward slash... Kemini Nyamani Yamano or Facebook.com forward slash join us on TV. I tweet at Kemini or join us on TV. Don't go away.